Call, uh, so I introduced you guys to the Quadro Tracker. It's a, um, like a water dowsing device. It's just a hollow piece of plastic with an antenna that swivels around and you walk around and it points to things like if you're looking for marijuana in students' lockers, it'll you know, like point right to some, somebody. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this particular one that was given to me uh, finds golf balls, especially if you're at a golf course and you check under enough bushes. Well, under the category of what's the harm of silly stuff like this, this device, the ADE-651, was sold to the Iraqi government for $40,000 a piece. It's just like this one, completely worthless, in which it allegedly worked by electrostatic magnetic ion attraction, which translates to pseudoscientific baloney, would be the nice word, uh, in which you string together uh, a bunch of words that sound good, but it does absolutely nothing. In this case, uh, allowing, uh, at, tr at uh, trespass points, allowing people to go through because your little tracker device said they were okay, actually cost lives. So there is a danger to pseudoscience in believing in uh, this sort of thing. So what I want to talk about today is belief. I want to believe, and, uh, and you do too, and in fact I think my thesis here is that belief is the natural state of things. It is the default option. We just believe. We believe all sorts of things. Belief is natural, disbelief, skepticism, science is not natural. It's, it's more difficult, it's uncomfortable to not believe things. So, be skeptical. Ask questions, demand proof, demand evidence. Don't take anything for granted. But here's the thing, when you get proof, you need to accept the proof. And we're not that good at doing that. And the reason that I can say that is because we're now in an epidemic of fear like one that I've never seen and hope never to see again. About 12 years ago, there was a story published, a horrible story, that linked the epidemic of autism to the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine shot. Very scary. Tons of studies were done to see if this was true. Tons of studies should have been done. It's a serious issue. The data came back. The data came back from the United States, from England, from Sweden, from Canada, and it was all the same. No correlation, no connection, none at all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we believe anecdotes. We believe what we see, what we think we see, what makes us feel real. We don't believe a bunch of documents from a government official giving us data. And I, I do understand that. I think we all do. But you know what? The result of that has been disastrous. Disastrous. Because here's a fact. The United States is one of the only countries in the world where the vaccine rate for measles is going down. That is disgraceful and we should be ashamed of ourselves. It's horrible. And what kind, of, what kind of a thing happened that we could do that? Now, I understand it. I do understand it because who, anyone have measles here? Does one person in this audience ever see someone die of measles? Doesn't happen very much. Doesn't happen in this country at all, but it happened 160,000 times in the world last year. That's a lot of death of measles, 20 an hour. But since it didn't happen here, we can put it out of our minds. And people like Jenny McCarthy can go around preaching messages of fear and illiteracy from platforms like Oprah and Larry King Live. And they can do it because they don't link causation and correlation. They don't understand that these things seem the same, but they're almost never the same. And it's something we need to learn, and we need to learn it really soon. We have measles in this country now. And it's getting worse, and pretty soon kids are going to die again because it's just a numbers game. And they're not just going to die of measles. What about polio? Let's have that. Why not? A college classmate of mine wrote me a couple weeks ago and said, you know, she thought I was a little strident. No one's ever said that before. Um, <laughs> she wasn't going to vaccinate her kid against polio. No way. Fine. Why? Because we don't have polio. And you know what? We didn't have polio in this country yesterday. Today, I don't know, maybe a guy got on a plane in Lagos this morning and he's flying to LAX right now, he's over Ohio. And he's going to land in a couple hours, he's going to rent a car, and he's going to come to Long Beach. And he's going to attend one of these fabulous TED dinners tonight. And he doesn't know that he's infected with a paralytic disease, and we don't either. Because that's the way the world works. When you start down the road where belief in magic replace evidence and science, you end up in a place you don't want to be. You end up in Tabo and Becky, South Africa. He killed 400,000 of his people by insisting that beetroot, garlic, and lemon oil were much more effective than the antiretroviral drugs we know can slow the course of AIDS. Hundreds of thousands of needless deaths in a country that has been plagued worse than any other by this disease. Please, don't tell me there are no consequences to these things. 
There are. There always are. Now, the most mindless epidemic we're in the middle of right now is this absurd battle between proponents of genetically engineered food and the organic elite. It's an idiotic debate. It has to stop. It's a debate about words, about metaphors. It's ideology. It's not science. Every single thing we eat, every grain of rice, every sprig of parsley, every Brussels sprout has been modified by man. You know, there weren't tangerines in the Garden of Eden. There wasn't any cantaloupe. There weren't Christmas trees. We made it all. We made it over the last 11,000 years. And some of it worked and some of it didn't. We got rid of the stuff that didn't. Now we can do it in a more precise way. And there are risks, absolutely. But we can put something like vitamin A into rice. And that stuff can help millions of people, millions of people prolong their lives. You don't want to do that? I, I, I have to say, I don't understand it. Um, we object to genetically engineered food. Why do we do that? Well, the things I constantly hear are too many chemicals, pesticides, hormones, monoculture. We don't want giant fields of the same thing. It's wrong. We don't want companies patenting life. We don't want companies owning seeds. And you know what my response to all of that is? Yes, you're right. Let's fix it. It's true. We've got a huge food problem, but this isn't science. This has nothing to do with science. It's law, it's morality, it's patent stuff. You know, science isn't a company. It's not a country. It's not even an idea. It's a process. It's a process. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the idea that we should not allow science to do its job because we're afraid is really very deadening. And it's preventing millions of people from prospering. You know, in the next 50 years, we're going to have to grow 70% more food than we do right now. 70%. This is investment in Africa over the last 30 years. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. They need it, and we're not giving it to them. And why? Genetically engineered food. We don't want to encourage people to eat that rotten stuff. Like cassava, for instance. Cassava is something that half a billion people eat. It's kind of like a potato. It's just a bunch of calories. It sucks. It doesn't have nutrients, it doesn't have protein, and scientists are engineering all of that into it right now. And then people would be able to eat it and they'd be able to not go blind. They wouldn't starve. And you know what? That would be nice. It wouldn't be chez panisse, but it would be nice. <laughs> and all I can say about this is, why are we fighting it? Why? I mean, let's ask ourselves, why are we fighting it? Because we don't want to move genes around. This is about moving genes around. It's not about chemicals. It's not about our ridiculous passion for hormones, our insistence on having bigger food, better food, singular food. This isn't about Rice Krispies. This is about keeping people alive. And it's about time we started to understand what that meant. Because you know something? If we don't, if we continue to act the way we're acting, we're guilty of something that I don't think we want to be guilty of, high-tech colonialism. There's no other way to describe what's going on here. It's selfish, it's ugly, it's beneath us, and we really have to stop it.